Hi everyone, I'm Modern Mulan. Today we'll be covering Ark Arrivals. This is a new free-to-play, play-to-earn game launched sa Binance Smart Chain. Meron din silang plans for Karja Chain launch dahil isa sa mga partner sila is Karja Ventures. But more on that later on. For this one, for this video, we'll be covering kung ano ba yung gameplay niya, yung mga NFTs, things you need to know before investing in this one, and other important details such as yung kanilang game economy, roadmap, team, etc. So if you want to learn more, you know what to do. Click the like button, subscribe, and keep on watching. Alright, so let's go sa kanilang website which is arcrivals.com. Nakalink po lahat ng babagitin natin sa description box so you can do your own research after watching this video. So as I've said, it's a free-to-play, play-to-earn game. It's a sci-fi action strategy NFT game fully based in user-generated content. So if we scroll down, makikita natin dito yung Faction War. Pero bago natin banggitin yan, para mas maintindihan nyo na maigi, let's talk about yung overview muna ng gameplay. So basically, what you need to know is that for this one, meron tayong base natin. And then there are two ways to play the game. So you can attack or defend. In defending, syempre kailangan mo i-defend yung resources mo. There are two main ones. So we'll talk about them maya-maya. So yun, meron kang resources na you have to defend, you have to protect. And then, at the same time, pwede ka rin mag-attack ng iba, yung base nila, and then steal their resources from them. Ngayon, meron din tayong mga faction wars na tinatawag. So we have five factions, as we can see here. We have Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So you can purchase yung mga NFT land and then pwede ka mag-enter ng global competition tapos magko-compete kayo and then of course kung sino yung mananalo or nasa top ng leaderboard sila yung may pinaka malaking rewards. So now that you get the overview yung gist of what's going to happen, pag-usapan naman natin in detail kung ano ba yung mga kailangan nyo malaman sa game. So yan, ganyan yung itsura niya. You can create commander ships and squadrons to attack yung enemy base. We'll be covering kung ano ba yung arc, building ships, commanders, troops, resources, and gems, and arcadiums in this video. So para hindi kayo maligaw once you decided na mag invest kayo sa game na to. So let's start with arc. Ark is the heart of the base. So yan, ang mission nyo nga is to protect this one. So ito yung binabanggit natin kanina. Next up is building. So for this one, kailangan natin mag-build ng mga mines para makakuha tayo ng iba-ibang resources or para ma-upgrade natin yung structures dun sa base natin. So yan, kasama dyan yung um, arcs, yung mini gun turrets, flamethrowers, cannons, landmines, etc. So yan, each player may create countless combinations daw of base designs para ma-defend against any enemy attacks. So we have two buildings, yung resource buildings and defense buildings. So ano ba yung difference between the two? So for resource buildings, ayan, we have yung gold mine and hyper fuel pump. Ito yung resources na pinoprotektahan natin as I've mentioned kanina. We have gold, ito yung kakailanganin natin kapag nag-construction tayo. And then pwedeng i-upgrade to para ma-increase yung production rate natin. So yung mission is to conquer the world in arc rivals, including mine your gold to set up and upgrade buildings for both defense and economy for power. Ayan. Aside sa gold, we also have hyper fuel pump. Dito naman sa hyper fuel pump, it's a special device. So ito ginagamit natin for tech research and to boost yung mga NFTs natin kagaya ng ship, commanders, and troops power. So yan, um, same thing sa gold or dun sa pagproduce ng gold, you can upgrade this para tumaas yung production rate nito. Now, aside sa resource buildings, we also have defense buildings, ba? So, medyo marami to. Nabanggit natin to kanina-kanina. So, defense buildings pang defend sa ating arc. So, yan. We have yung mini turret. Ayan, missile turret, photon cannon, flamethrower, bolt caster, shield generator, landmine, and yung wall. Yun yung iba-ibang weapons na pwede natin gamitin pang defend. Now, let's talk about yung mga ships natin. Each ships have different stats and five unique skills for users to build their own meta. So, you can click through these, makikita nyo. Uh, yung kanyang name, yung stars niya, and then yung skills. So, currently, we have eight ships to browse, pero dadami pa ito, they will be adding. So, yan, coming soon pa yung iba. Now, if you're wondering kung para saan ba yung stats na to, or ano ba yung details ng stats, let's go sa kanilang white paper and check yung kanilang 
kanilang table. Ayan, so meron silang level, hit point, damage bullet, fire rate, range, critical damage, and critical chance. So medyo self-explanatory naman sila sa kanilang pangalan. Pero eto, um, if you don't understand them, you can either take a screenshot of this one or you can go sa kanilang white paper and read this for yourself. So aside sa stats, we also have passive skills. Eto sila. So yeah, may solidarity, overwhelming, radar regeneration, HP, backpack. Again, kung player kayo and medyo familiar na kayo sa mga to, nabanggit natin skills and stats. But if you want to read more about them, ayan, meron naman silang skill description dito. So aside sa stats and skills, we also have to consider yung gun slots. So bawat ship meron siyang limited gun slot. Some ships only have two guns, iba four. Depende sa magiging rarity. So, so yan, si Drake in particular, four stars. So, assuming na four slots din yung para sa kanya. Now, we also have yung mga commanders natin. So, similarly, if you click through these, makikita nyo sila yung name nila. Ayan sila, pilot the ship. Ayan, si Tosh. Ito rin, uh, researchers barely escape, Frederick, Garon, Hel, Cartas, and Leila. So, ayan sila. Now, kagaya ng mga ship natin, there are also some things na you have to take note kapag pinag-uusapan natin yung commanders or yung mga NFT natin. So, they have what we call a hero level. So, merong dalawang kinds of level attributes sa commander section. So, we have yung commander's level and ultimate's passive skill. Yung commander level, ito yung commander's pilot skill and commander ultimate damage. Tapos, yung ultimate passive skill naman defines the ability. So, dito may mga ma-unlock pa tayo ng mga passive skills nila as you continue to play the game. So, yan. Meron din tayong mga hero rarity. Dalawa lang yan. So, we have legendary and immortal commander. Now, let's talk about yung stats nila. So, balik tayo sa kanilang white paper and cover the stats. Skill description, it will rain down a barrage of homing missiles. So, yan sila. Um... Ito yung mga iba examples pa of passive skills. And then, meron silang description dito sa side. Now, let's move on naman sa mga troops. So, itong mga to may kanya-kanyang strengths and weaknesses. So, ito yung mga offensive units natin. So, uh, medyo marami mga to will mention uh, some of them. Pero I think yung mga to kasi mas maganda i-cover pag nandiyan na yung actual gameplay. But for the overview, ayun nga, babanggitin lang natin. So we have mini tank, marine, medic drone, colossus, etc. So one example is yung mini tank nila. Sabi dito, it's a lightly armored unit with enough damage to wreak havoc. So may mga ganun lang sila na pwede natin gamitin nga. So ayan, meron tayong troops. We have two more to cover. We have yung resource and gems. So, nabanggitan natin to kanina yung gold and hyperfuel, di ba? Now, yung gem naman yung banggitin natin or um, i-describe natin. Yung gem yung gagamitin natin for time upgrading. Ayan. We can use this to summon yung Arcadium at saka summon din yung mga ship or commanders. So, ayan. Ito yung isa sa mga in-game currencies din nila. Now, if you're wondering kung ano ba yung Arcadium na pwede niya isummon, the Arcadium is the most powerful stone. So, may ability siya para ma-increase yung power ng isang player. So, yan. Each Arcadium, meron siyang tatlong primary stats and additional na three sub-stats. Let's go back sa kanilang white paper so I can show you yung table nila dito. Ayan. So again, these types of things, mas maintindihan natin sila kapag nandiyan na yung game. To give you uh, an overview of it nga, ito sila, power, ito, increase commander's attack, destruction, critical rate, heroic, fire rate, etc., etc. So you can also take a screenshot of this one or you can go ahead and read more about it sa kanilang white paper. Now that we know those information, balik tayo dun sa faction war na tinotch on natin ng konti kanina. So more details about this is that per season, it will last for 30 days. Ang requirement para makasali tayo dito is yun nga uh, kailangan natin bumili ng land. So, one NFT land ang minimum para uh, makapag-participate tayo. Ang war rule nila dito is users can only fight the enemy from other factions. So, hindi mo pwedeng kalabanan yung sarili mo or yung kasarili mong faction. Not the base of the same faction with the attacker. Yun. So, after a match, there are two types of points that will be counted. Yung sa non-faction and yung faction nyo. Now, 
now for the rewards. Of course, uh, we have different types of rewards. Merong tatlo. We have yung public reward, we have leaderboard reward, and the faction reward. So yung public reward, af after matapos ng faction wars, merong small public reward pool para dun sa mga may faction na at para dun sa mga wala pa. Kaya nga public siya. And then yung leaderboard reward, of course, for those in the top ng kanilang leaderboard. So top 20 fighters yan. So, yun yung mga bibigyan nila na extra reward. And then, for the faction reward naman, all factions will receive an amount of tokens in their pool depende sa rank nyo sa war. So, yun. Nakalagay din dito na take note daw na rewards in the above will be in Arkin or RKN minor to take. Tapos, non-faction players can mine the public reward only. So, yun. Make sure to take note all of those if you're planning on investing and playing ah, dito sa game na to, sa Ark Rivals. Now, for the Main NFT items, we've covered basically a lot of these na. Pero yung hindi pa natin na de describe is yung Arkin Miner. So let me show you this one sa kanilang white paper. So tong Arkin Miner gagamitin natin para makapagmine tayo na of course Arkin token. So a player can own many miners but can only place one miner sa base mo. So users can pick the miner on the web to activate it sa game. So yan, meron siyang apat na stats, LVHP capacity, and production rate per hour. So each miner has its own level. Player, pwede natin upgrade yan with tokens and resources. So kung madedestroy nila itong miner mo, um, yung mining process will be stopped. So hindi ka na makapag-mine. Player will need to repair it to continue the mining process. Kaya nga, very important din yung mga defense buildings na nabanggit natin earlier. Kasi you don't want them stealing uh, your resources at ayaw mong masi din nila itong Arkin Miner mo. Now, for the Arkin token, let's take a look at um, yung kanilang game economy. So, ito yung ticker nga niya, Arkin. Max supply is 1 billion. And then, BAP20 dahil nga sa Binance Smart Chain siya. Then, Arkin holders are meant to influence future of Ark rivals, signaling support for upgrades to the ecosystem and acquiring rewards on holding. So far, what we know about it is that Makakuha tayo na Arkin gamit ng Arkin Miner when we win yung mga wars, ba Yung tatlong klase ng reward system nila kanina. So, we'll receive yung token na to. And then, saan ba natin siya magagamit? So, with the things we've covered already, kapag nag-upgrade tayo, magagamit din natin siya doon. And I'm assuming na sa marketplace din nila ay may use case etong token nila. Now, for the tokenomics, eto yung kanilang breakdown. We won't be going over masyado dito. Again, I'll leave this up to you but let's take a look at yung kanilang team so they have 20 percent slightly higher compared sa mga ibang play to earn game but what's good about this one is that nakalock naman siya for 24 months and then vesting period niya is over five years meaning hindi nila madadump ito right away so that's good so yan partners have five percent locked six months Vest weekly for 12 months. Sige natin yung liquidity, 5%. Naka-unlock at TGE, okay? So, staking, 22%. Naka-lock ng 6 months. Vesting, further lock. Uh, Lock-up terms will be determined. In-game resources. So, medyo malaki rin yung in-game rewards sila, no? 31.5. Naka-lock for 3 months. Vesting and further lock-up terms will be determined. Yan, hopefully, update na nila to kasi last update pa niya was Jan 27. And meron pa silang mga to be determined na, ano, no? Na vesting schedule. So, yun, hopefully, i-update na nila to. Now, for the roadmap, what can we expect for Arc Rivals. So right now, nandito tayo, Feb 2022. Close beta testing nila for iOS and Android. Meron na rin silang ships, yung mga NFTs, or magkakaroon na rin. Uh, they will also be introducing yung Arc and Miner, which is also an NFT as we've covered, and yung ranking system nila. For next month, we can expect na yung open beta test nila for iOS and Android. If you want me to try yung kanilang beta testing, let me know in the comment section. I will happily cover this one for you. Maybe we can do it sa live. So we can also have have an open Q&A about the game and maybe I can help you out kung meron kayong mga questions pa. So let me know kung interested kayo sa ganon. So aside from that, they will also be introducing yung Faction Wars next month. So yan, meron na rin mga land NFTs. Of course, magka-partner itong dalawang to. Technology upgrade system and then uh, we can expect yung content expansion base level 5. Commander NFT nila for April. Arcadium, April na din. So, okay, by April, naka-launch na lahat ng NFTs nila. Magkakaroon sila ng gacha system din and faction booster system. 
So, I'm impressed na ano, naka-divide to per month. It's really nice to know kung ano yung mga short-term goals nila. Kasi this way, I think it will be easier for the team to realize each goal, di ba? Especially kung halimbawa, okay, February, ito muna yung focus natin. Compared sa iba na kunwari sabihan quarter one, ito lahat, di ba? So, uh, I think this way, is it's more organized, more transparent. It's great for win-win for both ends or both sides, di ba? For May naman, mag-open na yung beta test or beta marketplace nila. And then, achievement system, daily quest will be also for May. Rivals booster system as well. So, ito yung mga additional na pwede natin expect. We'll see here na there are major ones, gaya ng content expansion base level 6, Arcadium Fusion System, ayan. We also have yung base level 7, create to earn program ng ship commander, ayan. Dahil nga, ano, diba, UGC sila. And then, fourth quarter, may base level 8 na defense structure shop. And what's interesting is that they're also planning on additional NFTs. So, for the fourth quarter of 2022, we can see that happen uh, kasama yung mga weekly, monthly events. Tapos, i-continue nila pag-develop na new NFTs until first quarter 2023 and second quarter ng 2023. So, it's nice to know na meron silang mga additional pa na ganon. Hopefully, um, before they do create new NFTs, sana ma-burn nila or makahanap sila ng way para ma-burn yung mga existing na NFTs. So, I think a good way to, to to do this is siguro if you can fuse, alam natin to, fuse mo yung mga NFT mo and then create ka na higher ones or better ones. Another way of burning is siguro kung maglalagay sila ng lifespan for the NFTs, no? So, how about you guys? May mga ano rin ba kayo? May mga recommendations ba kayo? Um, something you've seen, mga burning mechanisms na you've seen successful sa mga ibang play to earn games na pwede nating i-recommend dito sa Arc Rivals. Kung meron, sound off in the comment section. I really love it when I hear from you guys dahil kapag narinig ko or nalalaman ko kung ano mga hinaharap niya sa play to earn game, that really helps me a lot in prioritizing specific projects, no? So, kung wala man kayong mga specific na mga requests, walang mga recommendations for videos, you can just comment kung ano yung mga hinahanap nyo for play to earn game so that I can use those metrics sa paghahanap natin ng mga i-cover natin na games. But anyway, that's it for me today for Arc Rivals. I hope you enjoyed this one. Nakalink po lahat na kanilang social sa ating description box so you can follow them and be updated sa kanilang mga announcements. Now, if you also want to Follow me if you want to be a part of the Modern Mulan Dynasty, as we call it. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. We're also on TikTok, Twitter, Discord, Instagram. Lahat ng yan meron na po tayo. At nakalink sila sa ating description box and pinned comment. I hope to see you there and on our next videos. But while you wait for our next upload, if you want to keep watching crypto-related content, napakarami nating videos for these. Meron tayo about trading, about play-to-earn games. I've actually chosen top two videos that I think you'll really love and you'll find value in. So you can choose from these videos na nasa screen nyo ngayon. And kung galing kayo dito sa Arc Rivals at lumipat kayo sa mga videos niyan or any other videos, let me know in the comment section para lang may fun inside joke tayo. Anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you sa comment section natin and on our next